Okay, let's talk about the introductory paragraph. Think Circa just starts off with a claim. It doesn't give a lot of instruction. It's up to your teacher to talk about writing an introductory paragraph. However, in the seventh grade, when you're writing for the STAR test, you should learn how to write an introductory paragraph. It's a, just transfer that same skill over to Think Circa. The three parts of an introductory paragraph are the hook, transition, and the thesis. Now, in Think Circa, because you're doing argumentative writing, the type of thesis you write is called a claim. It's something that you claim is true. It's just a different name for a thesis. And this is my example. In Think Circa, you're always given a connect. Step one, in fact, is a connect. And for this piece about Mystic Copeland, you were to write about a time when you were made to feel like you didn't belong. Well, writing out that story might be a paragraph or more all by itself. But we're going to use that condensed to be our hook for the introductory paragraph. Once when I was in elementary school, a group of kids told me they didn't want me to play with them. They even got the teacher to tell me to go away. There's a lot more to that story, but this isn't a paper about me. I'm just introducing the idea of being made to feel like you don't belong. And by making a personal connection, whoever's reading this may also make a personal connection. But I do want to transition to Misty Copeland. A lot of people have had similar experiences. Misty Copeland was told she wasn't right for ballet, but then she became the first African-American prima ballerina in New York City's American Ballet Theater. So that blue part's my transition, and now I get to my claim. Raven Wilkinson had a great deal of influence on Misty Copeland and her effort to help dancers of color feel like they belong in the world of ballet. Without her influence, Misty Copeland would have never gotten into ballet in the first place. Now you notice I crossed some lines out. Well, that's because this whole thing is a rough draft. Until the, the paper's turned in for a grade, you're always going to revise, you're always going to edit. And one of the things I did was to break it into two, two sentences. A, a thesis has a subject, an opinion, and reasons. Sometimes we leave the reasons for the body of the paper. But a lot of the time, your teacher's gonna want reasons in your introduction. And they like to see the word because. They'll say subject, opinion, because. Well, in this case, I took out the because <clears throat> and just made a whole new sentence out of it. And that's perfectly fine. Let's look at some examples that were turned in. <clears throat> She was a brave person who stood up for people of color and had people standing up to her, or like have her as their idol. She was the first African-American ballet dancer and inspires people to be whatever they want. She was not allowed to be a dancer because of the skin color and how they grow up. The little white kids are privileged or have money and freedom, unlike the little dark-skinned kids. Yes, maybe they didn't have money or enough to cover fees, but one chance could change everything. Well, I'm sure you recognize right away this is not an introductory paragraph. It never mentions Misty Copeland by name, never mentions Raven Wilkinson, never mentions Project Plie, but it does sum things up. It's an it's a okay summary that could go down in the conclusion of the paper where it kind of wraps things up and says, you know, we, we, I've written about Misty Copeland and all this, she was a brave person. She stood up for people of color. People look up to her. And, and even though some dark-skinned kids aren't, don't have the privileges that the white-skinned kids have, if they're given a chance, that could change everything. So I, I went ahead and included this because it was turned in. Um, does not work as an introduction, but it could be, after being cleaned up, revised, edited, it could be in the conclusion of the paper. 
Raven Wilkinson had more influence on Misty because she was the first ballet dancer that was colored and she wanted to be someone who had changed the way ballet is. Like they say, they judge people of color and make them feel like they don't belong. Well, this is what I see a lot. Now, in your first semester of Think Circa, you may be starting every paper with your claim. And that's what this does. Race, Raven Wilkinson had more influence on Misty. You eventually want to grow that out to have the hook and the transition and then your claim. But we have a great claim right there. Raven Wilkinson had more influence on Misty Copeland. Um, some people might say, you need to say more influence than what? Raven Wilkinson had more influence than Project Plie on Misty Copeland. Let's look at another example. Raven Wilkinson had more influence on Misty Copeland because when Raven came on screen for a documentary, Copeland got influenced by Raven. That made Copeland feel like she recognized herself as another dancer and all the things she said changed her life. Now that first sentence is kind of a circular logic. Raven had more influence on Misty Copeland because Misty Copeland got influenced by Raven. Easy fix. Drop off that, uh, here I'll use my fancy pen here. Drop this out, got influenced by Raven, and then merge this. Raven Wilkinson had more influence on Misty Copeland. We got subject opinion because there's our reason. Because when Raven came on screen for a documentary, Copeland recognized herself as another dancer, or really recognized herself in another dancer. And all the things she did changed her life. So that you fix that just as easy right there. Merge those two things, and, um, and you got a strong claim. Grow it out, add a hook, add a transition. A few years ago, I walked into a store with a friend trying to just get a soda and chips. And one of the first things we noticed was that we were being followed constantly by the manager, even though we had money out. This is called racial profiling. It's where you are judged or identified purely because of your race and nothing else. This is a part of racism. And racism has been around for hundreds of years. Racism is hating a person for the sole reason of the certain race they are. Well, all that's true. First of all, it talks. It starts off with a connection, you know, text to self connection. Here's how I relate to this whole thing about being made to feel like I don't belong. However, Misty Copeland's situation was not about racial profiling. If anything, it was just racial prejudice. So it's cut out all the stuff about racism. It's been around for hundreds of years and hating people. Because you're kind of going off on a different track. Instead, you know, cut all this out. Cut all this out. All this. Get rid of all this. Because you're you're you haven't even gotten to Misty Copeland yet, so your introduction is going to be too long. And then take out profiling. So what could we put instead that would apply both to Misty Copeland and to this situation where they were being discriminated against? It begins with a PR. Prejudice. This is called racial prejudice. You come into my store, because of your race, I think you're probably going to rob me. You're going to steal something, you're going to shoplift. Misty Copeland, because of your race, you don't belong in ballet. So if we say a few years ago, da, 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 this is called racial prejudice. Misty Copeland also experienced mis uh, racial prejudice when she was da, 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 da. There's your transition. Then answer the question, which had the most influence on her work? So great start, good middle, drop the end, replace it with the transition, to Misty Copeland and a claim.
Now we're going to start seeing something. And probably after the third example, you know what I'm talking about. Once when I was at a birthday party, I wanted to play on the trampoline. But the other kids would not let me. And they told their parents. A lot of people have had similar experiences like Rosa Parks and the bus driver who told her to give up her seat. But then she became the first lady of civil rights. Rosa Parks said color does not matter. Starts off with a text-to-self connection for a hook. Then it brings up Rosa Parks and the civil rights stuff. And, and that's okay. It needs to come continue and transition to Misty Copeland. And it could be done. You could say, even now, even 50 years later, Black African Americans are being discriminated against. So there's a transition. Misty Copeland was told she wasn't right for ballet and then get to your claim. So it's a good beginning. The question would be do we really want to go into Rosa Parks or transition to, and then transition to Misty Copeland or transition to Misty Copeland sooner? Because again, I don't want to have a big introduction and a small body. Once when I was in kindergarten, we got to play outside. And some girl from my class told me I couldn't play at them because I didn't look like the dolls they were playing with. The teacher told me to go play at the boys instead. A lot of other people have had similar experiences. Like Jackie Robinson. They told him because of his skin color he couldn't play baseball. But then he became the first African American to play Major League Baseball. The Kansas City Monarch Scholarship is what got him into the Major League Baseball because more people were seeing him. Well, you got the same situation here. And an even longer paragraph that has yet to get to the transition to Mystic Copeland or the claim about Mystic Copeland. So we have the good hook text to self connection. We have a transition. A lot of other people have had similar experiences, but we're transitioning over to Jackie Robinson. Now, if you want to use Jackie Robinson as a transition to Misty Copeland, just like with Rosa Parks, it can be done just like I explained before. But here we're going to have a really going to have to chop out some stuff like the, the scholarship deal um, and then transition to Misty Copeland. But again, you got to remember, you know, if your paper, if you had a four paragraph paper, well, your two body paragraphs are at least going to equal twice as much as your introduction. So if I took this introduction, transition to Misty Copeland, I would have to talk about her just as much as I did Jackie Robinson in the introduction. Then I'd have to put on my claim. So now I've got this huge introduction. So I've got to have huge body paragraphs. I could write it all, then I look at it and revise it, and then at that point I might go, nah, I've got to do some more tweaking on this. I need to revise and take some stuff out. Once in Spanish class, I want to look at something real fast. Okay. Have you started to notice something here? Once in Spanish class, I was the only one who didn't know how to speak Spanish. People found out and asked me questions like, how are you Mexican and can't speak Spanish? And would talk in Spanish, which made me feel left out. A lot of people can relate to the, these events. Misty Copeland was told the same thing, that she didn't belong in ballet. I think that Project Clay and Raven Wilkinson both helped Misty Copeland a lot to change the world of ballet. Perfect structure, perfect organization. Text to self-connection. Transition. Misty Copeland. we got a claim right here. Let's talk about the claim. That's our last sentence here. First, take out I think. You never want to put I think or in my opinion in your paper. Three reasons for that. One, I know it's your opinion. It's your paper. If it wasn't, if it wasn't your opinion, then you would say, well, according to some people or so-and-so said. But everything else is your opinion by default. You don't have to tell me this is what you think. Number two, and this is a, a picky grammatical thing, it changes 
your sentence subject. This sentence right here, the subject is you, the writer. And it's what you think. If I take it, I think, now my subject is Project Play in Rabin Wilkinson and how they both helped Misty Copeland. But with I think, then the focus is, this is about me and what I think. And the third thing is, it is a stronger claim when you don't say I think. Project Plie and Raven Wilkinson both helped Misty Copeland. I think Project Plie and Raven Wilkinson both helped Misty Copeland. Now I've exaggerated it, but it's almost a subconscious thing where it, it just sounds like you're not sure. The other thing to change, okay, so change, get rid of I think, and get rid of a lot. Both help Mystic Copeland to change the world of ballet. And then the other thing about it is this. You know, the question is, which of these, Project Play or Raven Wilkinson? But you can certainly say it was both of them. I think it was both of them. And what you've done is you've created a very nice opportunity to have two strong body paragraphs. One that tells the influence of Raven Wilkinson on Misty Copeland, and then another one on Misty Copeland and Project Plie and her influence on future dancers. So if I took out I think that and a lot, perfect paragraph, perfect introductory paragraph. One time in elementary. Now, now let's just look at something here. Let's look at these four. Once when I was at a birthday party, once when I was in kindergarten, once in Spanish class, one time in elementary school. What you've got to keep track of, and this is where your teacher comes in, because you've, you've written one paper, all right, it's wonderful, but your teacher has been reading them all day long and suddenly noticed once in Spanish class, once when I was in kindergarten, once when I was at a birthday party, you're not being original anymore. You don't know it because you've only read your paper. But your teacher's read so many of them, you all get them once this, once this, once this. And it's like, hold on, you need to come up with a new way to do that. A few years ago, I walked into a store with a friend. Ah, see, got a little difference there. Once at a party, once in kindergarten, once in smash class. All right. One time in elementary school. <clears throat> Because when I was in the, I want to look at something. Uh oh, look at me, look at me. Once when I was in elementary school, what I should have said is when I was in the first grade, see? And so, and this is why we have a community of writers. This is why we talk to each other. We bounce ideas out of each other. And so I'm dead. I'm going to change this. Anyway. When I was in the first grade, I'm, I'm also being more specific. So, All right, one time in elementary, we went to recess and they would not let me play soccer with them. I responded by bringing my better soccer ball to school the very next day. Mr. Copeland was made to feel that she did not belong, but that did not stop her from becoming the first African-American in the American Ballet Theater. Without the help of Raven Wilkinson, she would have never seen her play Passion for the Sir of Ballet. This one is so close to being perfect until the last few words, where suddenly something has gone wrong. Without the help of Raven Wilkinson, which I love the fact that we begin that sentence with a clause there. Without the help of Raven Wilkinson, she would have never seen her something, something, something ballet. I don't know what that is. Um, without the help of Raven Wilkinson, Misty Copeland would never have achieved her dream of being a, a ballet dancer. Would never have let her, if I want to use the word passion, um, follow her passion for ballet. Something got lost there. When the student reads it, uh, he or she will go, what? What was I trying to say? And, and eventually we'll remember. So, um, once I was in elementary school, I lost a friend. She became mean to me all the time. 
I told her that I wanted to become a police officer, but she told me that I was never going to make it. Some kids have a dream that others don't want them to believe in or to believe they're going to make it happen. Misty Copeland was told that she was never going to be a ballet dancer, probably because of the color of her skin, but she was told that she just wasn't right for it. Then she became the first African-American prima, prima ballet dancer. Misty Copeland's work has influenced the perception of black women in ballet. Nowadays, more and more African-American women are in ballet. All right. So this one is good. It, don't get me wrong. It's good. It doesn't bring up Project Play or Raven Wilkinson. It can do that later. It could do that in the body somewhere. You might have a picky teacher, and by somewhere I mean in the first body paragraph. You could have a picky teacher who says, no, I want it in your claim. The other thing is this sentence here is the claim. Oops. This is the claim right here. Mr. Copeland's work has influenced the perception of black women in ballet. It, it doesn't say a lot like how it's influenced it. And my advice would be to somehow incorporate this into that. Make it one sentence. Because otherwise that last sentence is just kind of left hanging there. Um, she became the first African-American prima ballet dancer. Misty Copeland's work has influenced the perception of black women in ballet. And this you could throw in the because. Because now there are more and more African-American women in ballet. I think that that's what's missing. A good transition between those two. All right. So we're back to that screen. So that's it. That, okay, this really wants us to read this again. Um, look at those. If one of these was yours, then go ahead and work on it, improve it, take the tips I gave you. Now you'll notice that I did do some editing and correcting of some spelling and stuff, uh, just like I did with my own. This is what we do. We edit for each other. And then make sure you've got your whole introduction written and ready because our next step is the body. All right.